And it's happened. For the first time in three weeks, I can actually call a new episode of MLP good. Which is a relief, because I really do prefer when I can be positive in these things. All that anger, it gets kind of exhausting after a while. The changeling which appeared at the end of the crystalline generated a lot of buzz, pun intended, within the fandom, with most, including myself, expecting that it was foreshadowing the season finale, the same way the season 5 finale was foreshadowed by Starlight appearing hidden in a few episodes there. It's something of a shock to find that instead it was, for now at least, just setting up a one-off episode in the Crystal Empire, and a spike episode at that. I'm sure some will be thrown for a loop by that, much the same way that they were when all the build-up for the Equestria games ultimately resulted in a one-off spike episode as well. Personally though, I like having my expectations subverted, especially when it results in a good episode. And like Equestria games before, episode 16 of season 6, The Times They Are a Changeling, is definitely a good episode. I realize that since I didn't start doing episode reviews until the week after his excellent previous episode, Gauntlet of Fire, this is my first review where I'll actually be talking about Spike's character. I'm aware that he, more than just about any other main character, is divisive among fans. A lot of people seem to hate on the little guy, and while I can understand to an extent, I've always been a fan. He's a different sort of character from the main six in the CMZ, and through him the writers are able to tackle very different, usually more introspective issues. His episodes are rarely the most exciting or memorable, but generally they are pretty interesting to think about. I also think he's one of the easiest characters in the series to trace a character arc for. In Season 1 with Al's Well That Ends Well, he dealt with issues of self-worth when he felt his was compromised with the introduction of Alicious. His Season 2 episodes then explore the question of his identity, what it means to be a dragon in a world of ponies. Season 3 with Spike at Your Service, it becomes apparent that post-Dragon Quest, he has decided that to be a dragon is what he makes of it, and he's back to the questions of his worth. Which is where he stays through his Season 4 episodes, which explore his place in the group as a whole, how the one he most admires in particular looks at him, and then finally, with Equestry Games, what was likely at the heart of it all, his own deeper internal hang-ups. We see there that the likely reason that Spike is constantly trying to prove his worth is a need not to be praised by others, but to feel personally validated. And it ends with him acknowledging this part of himself and ultimately becoming more self-assured. Then Season 5 came, and I think it's pretty clear that the writers didn't yet know where to take Spike from that. His one episode of the season, the only one of his episodes I really dislike, Dragon Quest was poorly done but I still think it's an important and needed episode for his character, Princess Spike didn't really give us much of anything. I guess it could be said it's another meditation on his inherent dragon greed, but that had kind of already been done twice at that point, and better. It was a bad moment for Spike, and it did have me wondering what sort of place he would have in the show come Season 6. Gauntlet of Fire exceeded my every expectation. Here was a much more capable Spike, a Spike who had clearly been allowed to grow from his earlier character, who was as much an ambassador of friendship as Twilight at her best. Seeing the strength of character he acted with as he confronted an old antagonist who had once fed the doubt in him, it was an ultimate payoff for everything that had come before. And truth be told, I honestly did kind of wonder at the time if it wasn't going to be a fluke, if next time we had a Spike episode we wouldn't just have another Princess Spike. It's nice to find instead that that didn't happen at all, and in fact the next Spike episode has picked right back up where Gauntlet of Fire left off. And it's great! There is little more satisfying in a show like this than seeing a character achieve true growth. Take the title character of Steven Universe, for instance. One of the absolute rewards of that series is seeing how far Steven has come from the goofy child at the start, unable to take anything seriously, to where he is now, a no less earnest but far more assured individual who is a reliable pillar of hope and an example of fortitude for those dear to him. Spike with these past two episodes is proving to be a similar character, where once he was defined by an emotional immaturity, albeit one somewhat different from Steven and even the other child characters in MLP, he now acts with confidence, standing firm for what and who he believes in. Also like Steven, it just so happens that he's the sole younger male within a group of far more immediately remarkable adult women of another species, but that's beside the point. Though the change from where he was before to now is significant, it remains believable because like Steven, Spike still seems like Spike. He's just a Spike who has grown and learned to be a better adjusted person. Dragon. Whatever. And even then he still makes mistakes. I know some people have been hard on him for the part of the episode where he fails to stand up for Thorax at first, which is understandable, but I think it's only natural given the severity of that moment. The situation is a difficult one. He's surrounded by both ponies he cares about and who think highly of him, all of whom have already made up their mind about the situation. He's become a stronger character, yes, but if he had thrown himself between Thorax and the others then and there, I think it would have been too much of a transformation to be believed. The pressure there is just too great. I actually like how instead he immediately realizes he's made a mistake and sets out at once to correct it. It's not only more believable, but it shows no less growth of character. Then he just goes for it. 
He puts everything on the line, as Twilight says. Doing right by Thorax is more important to him than the adulation of the Crystal Empire. It's a truly powerful character moment, even excusing the song itself, which I'll talk about later on. I know some people are hard selling how it goes down. In Equestria, all you need to do is sing a song, and then everyone agrees with you. I say take the music away, and what you have instead is an impassioned plea to reconsider and discard prejudice. That can be a powerful thing. And it's certainly enough to get through to someone like Twilight, who knows Spike so well and trusts him. Then you have the Princess of Friendship bagging what he says, and that's bound to sway others quickly, especially her family. Could it have been done better? Yeah, I suppose. I would have liked to see some of the ponies at least a little unsure, even after it all. Perhaps an extra line of dialogue from one of the guards expressing some doubt, and then maybe a follow-up from Starlight relating the situation to her own, thereby giving her more of a reason to be in the episode. Still, it works well enough for me, and I do like that even though she didn't say anything, the animators did throw in this moment where we can basically read Starlight's emotions as the song connects with her, and she realizes how it does relate quite plainly to what she's gone through in seeking acceptance. Speaking of which, I would say that even though she didn't really do much in it, it is good to see Starlight here in an episode in more of a minor supporting role. It's often these days that when a new episode comes around, there are people demanding to know where she is if she's not featured. Personally, it doesn't bother me so much that she's frequently absent. She's become a friend, accepted by everyone, but despite the insistence of some, she isn't a new part of the core group just yet. It would be too much of a leap if she was suddenly going everywhere and doing everything with the main six. She simply doesn't have the history or sort of bonds that they have with each other. But it is indeed good when she is there in an episode to give little bits of her own unique perspective on things. Likewise, it's good to see Sunburst again, even if he did even less in the episode, pretty much just confirming he'll be a recurring facet of the supporting cast, and of course it's nice seeing Cadence and Shining Armor too. Any opportunity for some sunshine sunshine is very much welcome, especially when there are plot reasons for it and it's not just for the sake of fan pandering. Sure, their inclusion did seem to mostly amount to a lot of not entirely needed exposition, but eh, I'm a sucker for continuity, so I'll take all the nods back to Canterlot Wedding. Still can't say I'm very fond of a certain unearned infant alicorn on the other hand, but eh, at least she wasn't in it very much this time. But enough about returning characters, let's talk instead about a new one. Thorax is, personality-wise, not really much to get excited about. Unlike the last friend Spike made in the face of doubt, Dragon Lord Ember, who was really pretty awesome, he's a little bland. Basically just your average nice guy, likable, friendly, enough so as to get you on his side to want to see him be accepted ultimately, but nothing too immediately interesting. What makes him much more compelling than who he is, is what he is, a changeling defector. His introduction answered a lot of questions we've long had about changelings. Can they talk? Do they have a sense of individuality? Or are they a hive mind? It's good to finally know this stuff, and I'm sure fans will find it very satisfying, as the theme of good changelings wanting to set themselves apart from Chrysalis's tyranny is one that is often repeated in fan works. All things considered, I genuinely hope that more is done with him. In fact, this has me hope even more that we do see Chrysalis and her changeling armies again. I want to see him do as he said and try and change the changeling way. I don't know if Chrysalis can be reformed, but if she can, this is certainly the first step. It seems doubtful, but in the flashback in the episode, we did at least see her show something resembling fondness for one of the newborn changelings, which could potentially be subtle foreshadowing, alluding to the fact that there is some kindness in there somewhere. I really want to see Thorax follow the example Spike has set on his behalf and make a plea to Chrysalis and others regardless. Whether it works or not, it could potentially be a really powerful moment, and I hope we get it. Now let's talk about that song. For one thing, it sure was a long time coming, wasn't it? It took six seasons, during which all we got was Spike comically singing a few lines on one of Twilight songs and his hilariously cringeworthy performance in Equestria games. And he's supposed to be a main character. Discord's had a song, the Flim Flam Brothers have had two, and Starlight's had like, what, three now, despite being only in a handful of episodes so far? It's kind of odd that it's taken this long. I mean, perhaps at one point there was a question of whether or not a Spike song would be a thing even worth having. The idea of him singing was treated as a joke, after all. A lot of us, I'm sure, were convinced a Spike song wasn't something we really wanted. But then, it's a pony kind of Christmas, that thing I talked about in my first review when I was trying harder to be funny and had even less of an idea what I was doing when it came to the editing came out. And yeah, any doubts about whether or not a Spike song could be awesome were demolished. His song, a delightful, jazzy rendition of Jolly Old St. Nicholas, was pure fun and easily one of the best songs on the album. And basically, since I first heard that song, an actual Spike song in the show has been right up towards the top of my list of things I wanted to see happen in Season 6. All that said, I'm not really sure A Changeling Can Change is the Spike song I wanted to see. It's weird, but while I do think the song is pretty good, I just don't really think this is the sort of song that suits Spike. 
This kind of intense confessional ballad is the kind of thing I want to see Twilight sing or Starlight, not so much Spike. Kathy Westlake does a good job on the vocal, and I'm sure this will convince people who miss the Christmas album once and for all that yes, Spike can indeed sing, but I still can't help but feel something more up-tempo would better suit her range while singing as the character. Because of the nature of the song and its lyrics, which admittedly are a little clumsy and overdone, I can also see it being something of a turnoff for some who might find it trite or schmaltzy. It doesn't quite veer into that for me though, mostly because of the strength of Mr. Ingram's arrangement, some pretty nice visuals accompanying it, and me just really appreciating where Spike is coming from. This is his big moment to prove his strength of character. It's something I really want to see, and that has me connect to it all in a bigger way potentially than it earns. Ultimately, I would say it's not really high on my list of MLP songs and that it probably works better in the context of the episode than on its own. I honestly do kind of wish Spike had gotten something a little better for his first song, but I do still enjoy it and I rather hope that it opens the door for more Spike songs in the future. Duet with him and Ember next time she appears, please. And that basically covers it. The episode was really pretty great. It built on continuity, gave us new information, a new character who interesting things could be done with in the future, and it was pretty much exactly what I'd want from a Spike episode at this point in the series, staying true to the great promise shown in Gauntlet of Fire. The best part? The episode came to us courtesy of a pair of brand new to Season 6 writers, Chris Wyatt and Kevin Burke, who have reaffirmed after last week's fiasco that not all new writers are created equally. Instead, as with Dave Rapp and Mike Vogel before, I'm left very much excited to see what these guys might give us in the future. And that is my ultimate takeaway. It wasn't perfect, and there were parts that definitely could have been done maybe a little better, but after a couple weeks of real disappointment, this was enough to restore my optimism that perhaps, much like Spike himself seems to be, Season 6 is back on the path to great things. This has been a Rare D-Dash Review, thanks for watching, and see you soon.